Hey, it's Nasser El Arabi. And do you work for yourself? And do you want to buy a house? But, you know, you're self-employed. You're not necessarily a W-2 employee. But you want to know how you do that. And if you can do that, well, we're going to teach you how in this video. And you're going to find out if you can. Hey guys, this is Nasser, aka the Real Estate Duo. Today I am back with Bliss Green, and she is going to educate us on getting a home loan while self-employed. So, Bliss, I've been through the process uh, a few times. Well, two uh, self-employed, and even on the podcast, they say all the real estate podcasts, the the bigger ones, where they're educating people on this stuff. It's like, hey, to get a a, a loan as a self-employed person is actually harder somebody with a W-2 job. So I, I don't tell people to go out and quit their jobs. I'm saying, hey, look, if you got a good W-2, leverage that as well to get to acquire real estate. So the last property uh, I owned, a hedge fund um, bought it, and then they turned around and offered me um, uh, a refinance loan on, on my, my other house, okay? And it was like, yo, we get you in at a 2.8, and I'm like, that's too good to be true. All right, let's go ahead and, and see what they're doing. And they, and they got it done. And uh, with that being said, but I had those. Okay, first of all, it was COVID. So the COVID process and getting them all the documents, it, it, it was just a headache, you know, because they had to verify that. And I had to verify them that my business was still making money. You know, I had to write them letters and all types of stuff. So, but just in general, right? Pre-COVID, you know, post-COVID, during COVID, like what, what is it like getting a home loan as a self-employed person? Well, first of all, in the future, I always want you to call me first, but I'm glad we're here today. <laughs> you're gonna call me first. You call Absolutely. me first too. Yes, um, we'll do. Rates have been unprecedentedly low. Before you mentioned how long I've been doing this and how many rate cycles I've seen, we have never seen rates, 30 year rates this low in the last 20 years I've been doing business. So if you're having a thought in your mind, should I buy? Yes. Should I refinance? Yes. Should I? Yes. That's what should be happening right now. You definitely need to call. But um, you're asking if self-employed people have a harder time to qualify. The answer to that is yes. And the reason for that is because the IRS allows you to write off as a self-employed person almost 400 different expenses. Absolutely in conjunction with your business annually. And you can basically write your profitability off to zero and of course still reap the benefits of being an entrepreneur. And that is perfectly lawful and smart as an entrepreneur. This is why you, that's one of the benefits of doing it, right? To control your business, to, to make income for yourself and to mitigate your costs and expenses to the IRS. However, that's IRS tax code. In mortgage lending, the majority of mainstream mortgage lenders, if they're going to underwrite you on a, a traditional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac underwriting platform, we require a two-year average of your adjusted gross income. So this is not the money you made. It is what you pay taxes on after you wrote off all of your expenses. So this is a different number versus what you actually earn. And so it can reduce how much you could qualify for. And in some cases, if you can qualify at all. So I like to look at self-employed individuals' taxes even before I pull their credit, just so I can get an idea of how much income there is to qualify. And I'm really good at forecasting and helping people plan ahead and project. So if you need to know how much money you need to file on your taxes in order to qualify in this traditional space, I can help you do that. All right. It's kind of crazy you said that because, yes, taxes. We're back to that. Years ago, somebody I consider a mentor in the real estate space, he said to me, I was, I was like, man, my tax bills are crazy, man. I was complaining about my tax bills, you know, and this is years ago, probably about six, seven years, you know, ago. And I'm writing anywhere between 30 to $80,000, you know, to the IRS. So, right? You, all right. So he was like, look, that's fine. That's what you want. He was like, man, a lot of guys, they write off everything, don't show no income, but they're not bankable. They can't walk into no bank to get loans. He said, man, once you become bankable, he said, that can change your real estate career. 
where you can walk in the bank and get loans. So I took his advice and now I see the power of it because now uh, Bliss, she does the, the primary market, but like even just going into like the local banks and things for investment loans, I'm seeing guys, you know, pay five and 6% on a construction loan for investment than pay a hard money lender. 12 to 15. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the power. And I do construction permanent too. Yeah, they really, they get to that. so they get to that, but yeah, so the tax return, so taxes are important. So make sure you guys are, you, you, you have a, a good tax accountant, you have good books because um, somebody like, let's say you go to Bliss and she has to review that stuff, you know, it, she, you want it to be clean and all that. Now, Bliss, why would the topic of self-employment? All right, let's say if somebody... They don't show a lot of income, but in their personal account, they have a lot of money saved. Does that help out? Yes. You could consider it as a balance, a seesaw effect. We had talked about in a previous video, which we'd love for you to go watch and subscribe. <laughs> my YouTube channel, Lending Bliss, and your YouTube channel. Real Estate Guru. In a previous video, we were discussing student loan debt and um, one of the strategies to be able to qualify with student loan debt. And so here is the same solution to this strategy if you're self-employed, one of the things that we see oftentimes with self-employed individuals, just as a, a stereotypical commonality, is that if you are your boss, you don't have anybody to fall back on. So you have to say there is no alternative. Like if the economy hits a downturn or business does not perform or you take losses, your propensity to save is your only safety net. So unlike the average W-2 employee, self-employed people usually are really good savers. And so the saving grace, I always say saving saves lives, but the saving grace in your having a huge propensity to save, and I mean inordinately like large sums of money, is that if you, for some reason, are not bankable, or your banking power is low by way of being able to qualify for loans because you are, instead of paying the IRS on large sums of reported income, you've mitigated your losses and you've chosen to save. Okay, that's that's where I would say that makes some good sense. But you can use large down payments and qualify for what you have reported and still get your intended outcome. So savings does save lives, for oh, sure. See, there you have it, save your money. Uh, been telling you guys that for years. And invest, right? And, yes, and invest. Definitely invest. So, like, bring that you bring up investing. Now, assets, right? Let's say somebody has a stock portfolio. They come to you. Um, they say, hey, I have a little bit of savings, but I have this in my stock portfolio. Does that count? Oh, well, let's talk about private wealth clients, right? Most banks, if you go into a depository institution, what they consider private wealth is someone who has over $500,000 worth of liquidity. So once you get to that level in an account, now we can do different things for you. And that could actually be your income source. If you have that level in some type of account, an annuity, managed investment account. So there are alternatives to coming up with resources, but again, saving saves lives, but it does have to be significant. We would be talking about maybe possibly the equivalent of the, the amount of purchase that you're making in an account and or the equivalent of 360 payments in an you know account uh -huh. somewhere. So it's not always clear cut. And we're also talking about that amount being able to sustain all your debts, right? So this is the qualifying source, but again, 50% of that plus the new purchase on your current debt. So it's, you know, an alternative, but it still has to fit the overall equation for us. All right, got it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put all of Bliss's information, social media, book, all on the screen right now. So this is how you can get in contact with her. She does all 50 states. So um, she does loans in all 50 states. So therefore, if wherever you're at, you can ask a question. You can get a loan from her. She can walk you through the process. And as far as me, I'm going to put my um, social media stuff right here on the screen as well. And as you know, guys, go to the blog, realestatedoodroo.com. Get my free contracts and assignments by putting your name and email in. And do not forget to go, uh, go to the Facebook group and wholesaling with the Duru if you got any other real estate questions. 
I'll see you guys in the next video.